Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist? So today we're going to talk about the history of the Chaldeans. However, when talking about Chaldea, it's important to note two distinct groups. First, there is the ancient region of Chaldea, and then there is the current ethnic subgroup known as the Chaldean Catholics. Both of these are based in Iraq. The extent to which these two groups are linked is debatable. Some Chaldean Catholics will try to link these two groups together, but most modern historians see these two groups as being non-related. Let's briefly go over the ancient Chaldeans. The ancient Chaldeans were found in modern-day southern Iraq, and played an important part in ancient Babylon's politics. Chaldeans and the native Babylonians would regularly fight over control of the city, often leading to ethnic violence and the intervention of the old Assyrian Empire. The leading kings of the Neo-Babylonian Empire were actually ethnic Chaldeans, at least partially, with the empire sometimes referred to as the Chaldean Empire. By the end of the empire, Chaldeans and Babylonians had, for the most part, become indistinguishable from each other. The origins of the modern-day Chaldeans are complicated. It wouldn't be accurate to call the Chaldeans their own distinct ethnic group, although there are some Chaldeans who will claim it is one. Most Chaldeans are considered to be a part of the Assyrian ethnic group, a Christian people who live in northern Iraq and parts of Syria, Iran, and Turkey, similar to the Kurds. The Chaldeans are distinct from the rest of the Assyrian ethnic group, primarily due to them belonging to the Chaldean Catholic Church, an Eastern Catholic Church with most of its followers in modern-day Iraq. It is believed over 600,000 people belong to this church across the world. The origins of the church are complicated and messy, so bear with me for a bit. The church gets its origins from the Church of the East. This church was essentially made up of all Christians who weren't in the Roman Empire during the 400s, with many living in the border areas of the Persian Sasanian Empire. This church existed separately from all other churches for hundreds of years, forming its own distinct identity. Starting in the 15th century, those who followed the church began to be called Chaldean. This is believed to be a reference to the Chaldean language, or as it is now more commonly called today, Syriac. This century would also see much of the church destroyed during the invasions of Tamerlane, while the church had expanded throughout much of Iran and even as far as Central Asia and China, Tamerlane and his horde had utterly destroyed many of these outlying Chaldean communities, forcing them to return to their homeland in Iraq. The 16th century would see unrest in the church. The title of patriarch, which was the head of the Church of the East, became disputed between two different powerful factions within the church. The ruling patriarch, Shemon VII Ishub, was unpopular due to a shady selling of church land and appointing his teenage cousins to powerful political positions. A rival faction attempted to remove him, but under canonical law, or just the law of the church, didn't have anyone that could legally remove him. This is when they decided to turn to the Catholic Church for support. This would result in a meeting with Latin Catholic clergymen and pro-Catholic Chaldeans, who decided to form a new church in 1552 that would be known as the Chaldean Catholic Church. This church would take a large portion of followers from the Church of the East. Currently, it is larger than the Assyrian Church of the East and the ancient Church of the East, who are the remaining claimants of the Church of the East. Again, messy church politics. Before we continue with the history, I'll briefly talk about the culture of the Chaldean Catholics. Many Chaldeans speak the Syriac language, a Semitic language both at home and in church. The church being an Eastern Catholic church is a blend of both Catholic and Eastern teaching. The Chaldeans, being ethnic Assyrians, share similar cuisine and music and very often live close to other Assyrians, along with Kurds and Arabs who live near them. The highest concentration of Chaldeans is based in the Nineveh Plains region of northern Iraq. The Chaldean church would suffer in the following centuries. They would fight both politically and literally with not only the rival church of the east, but also Kurdish tribes who would periodically raid Chaldean villages for various reasons, and Ottoman authorities who were towards the end of their empire became increasingly hostile towards Christians. Even the Latin church could at times prove hostile towards the church, as the Latin church attempted to Latinize and reduce the expansion of the Chaldean church. The church would suffer during World War I, as anti-Christian sentiment reached an all-time high in the Ottoman territory. The Ottoman authorities would routinely destroy Christian villages and massacre Chaldeans, fearing that they would be used by foreign powers to weaken the Ottomans. While it's unclear specifically how many Chaldeans were killed, total Assyrian deaths ranged from as low as 150,000 to as high as 300,000. Ironically, many of these massacres drove some Assyrians to join the British and Russian war effort to hopefully create an Assyrian state. After World War I, many Chaldeans found themselves in British Iraq. They had ultimately failed to gain enough international pressure to form their own state, and weren't even able to gain an autonomous zone they had as a backup plan. While conditions did improve, and Assyrians were generally treated favorably by the British government, massacres and the killing of Assyrians, like the Semela massacre, did occur. As Iraq transitioned into a republic, things did seem to get better, as more Assyrians and Chaldeans began to become integrated into wider Iraqi society. 
This would all end under the rule of Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. He stripped the Assyrians of many of their rights and tried to Arabize them, encouraging them to speak Arabic and change their names to more Arab-sounding ones. Those who spoke out against the government were often killed or tortured. Within this climate, several different Assyrian political parties and militias were formed, all with the goal of protecting ethnic Assyrians and advocating for greater political rights of the group. These groups would at various points wage guerrilla war against the Iraqi government, Kurdish militants also fighting government oppression, and on occasion, each other, over divisions of identity or political decisions. In particular, arguments over whether Chaldeans and Assyrians are a part of the same community have led to increasing tension. Eventually, in 2003, the Ba'athist regime was overthrown, and Assyrians hoped that they would be able to live in peace. This peace wouldn't last long as the country descended into political and religious violence. Islamist forces, often unable to effectively defeat the foreign troops stationed in their country, took it out on the Chaldeans, Assyrians, and other minority groups. Perhaps the most famous of these attacks was the kidnapping and murder of the Chaldean Archbishop of Mosul, Palos Fararojo. His death sparked widespread international attention to the plight of the Christians in Iraq. Many Chaldeans would be killed when ISIS took over northern Iraq in 2014, with a terrorist group attempting to purge all non-Sunni Muslims from the region. These attacks and continued repression led to more and more Chaldeans fleeing the country. Today, it is estimated half of all Chaldeans live outside their traditional homeland, with many living in America, Lebanon, Australia, and Sweden. These communities have been noted for trying their best to keep their traditional customs and language alive, along with trying to inform their new country's governments about the plight of their people back home. Also to be noted, Anna Eshu, who is the Democratic representative from California's 19th district, is a member of the church. Chaldeans in Iraq have joined the political process in the country, with several political parties such as the Chaldean Democratic Union and the Chaldean Syriac Assyrian Popular Council being formed. Both of these parties have fought for increased autonomy for the Chaldean community, often asking for an autonomous zone to be set up in the Nineveh Plains region. Several paramilitary militias have been formed with the rise of ISIS, usually used by either the Iraqi government or the Kurdish regional government as police to protect local Christian communities or in counterterrorism operations. An interesting question we can ask ourselves to finish off this episode is why doesn't a Chaldean state exist? Simply, they are too small. They don't have the numbers, the geographic obstacles to prevent invaders, or the political unity to form their own state. The Nineveh's Plains region, while holding a large number of Assyrians, still is only 40% Christian, with other ethnic and religious groups able to exert and rely on more political pressure from outside the Nineveh Plains, something the Chaldeans and Assyrians really can't do. As long as Assyrians, Chaldeans, and other smaller subgroups of Assyrians fight each other, they will never be able to unify and form a strong enough political bloc to create their own state. So that is it for this episode. Hopefully the next episode will be Australia. If you want to contact me, you can contact me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for if you want to send your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Thank you, take care, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.